en question. Le président. The president. Veuillez vous asseoir. Please be seated. The court is now back in session. Before the chamber hands over the floor to the co-prosecutors, the chamber wishes to inform the prosecutors that you will have the two hours to put questions to the witness as um, requested, uh, you have already used uh, 90 minutes uh, of this, so you have 30 minutes, minutes left, and the civil party lawyers will have one hour for the examination. Pour leur du Merci beaucoup, Monsieur le Président, pour uh, I votre grateful, décision. Mr. President, for your Avant la pause, Monsieur le Témoin, nous parlions des slogans que vous aviez entendus à la radio break, de la bouche we euh, mottos, you would des Khmer Rouge. Et je voudrais, pour être encore plus précis, lire un extrait to be specific, I wish de to votre livre. C'est la page 65 en français, la page 51 en anglais, et en Khmer, l'IRN est 00, 86, 23, 51. 00862351. Et voilà ce que vous aviez écrit. You write the following. Ce nettoyage par le vide this cleansing, correspond surtout this à une vi vision de l'homme. L'homme vicié par un régime corrompu ne peut Man être changé. Who is Il doit solid être or retranché by physiquement society, cannot be de la communauté des He purs. Must be placed in a pure Community. Et vous citez alors un certain nombre de slogans. You quote a certain number of slogans. Il faut détruire le régime. The regime must be destroyed. Écraser complètement l'ennemi. The enemy must be Ce qui est infecté doit être incisé. What is infected Ce qui must est pourri be cut out. doit être retranché. What is rotten must be removed. Ce qui est trop long doit être raccourci What is too long pour être must à la juste mesure. And made the right length. Couper un mauvais plan ne suffit pas. Il It faut le déraciner. Plant, Tels sont les slogans qui tant à la radio que dans les meetings justifient cette épuration. Those are among the slogans used both on the radio and at meetings to justify the purge. Alors, pourriez-vous nous dire ce Mr. que les Khmer Rouges entendaient par le concept de pureté et de communauté by the notion de pure. of purity? And the community or Selon the brotherhood of the pure, et à la radio. based on what you heard, based on what you were told by the refugees, and based on what you heard on the radio. Response. This question is difficult to respond. C'est une question à laquelle il est difficile de répondre. I already handed over to. Mr. Maxwell Lemont, a document in which I explained au juge Marcel Le Monde, to him. The document is explaining about the t status in Khmer society, the real villagers Or people were the peasants. Cambodian. And the lower middle class poor peasants. Les paysans Khmer et les paysans moyens inférieurs. The pure Khmer people are those who do not les Khmer take a private ownership sont ceux as qui n'ont pas de important qui ne considèrent pas la propriété privée comme important and uh, Anka took uh, that as uh, an honor or prestige Anka uh, considérait uh, qu'il s'agissait d'une uh, they, they offered or, or they dubbed uh, the pure people un instrument docile dans les mains a docile instrument in the hands of Ankar. Un instrument docile dans les mains de l'Ankar. 
दक्षिणे सो द प्योर पीपल डिड नॉट प्रोसेस देयर ओन थॉट्स दे हैड टू डिवोट टू फॉलो द Anka ne pensait pas par eux-mêmes, ne suivait les politiques de l'Anka, n'était intéressé que par les intérêts de la nation. Merci, Monsieur le Témoin. Thank you. On vient à un autre Now, sujet. Vous like avez dans votre uh, livre parlé du fait que vous book, aviez, you spoke about the fact, uh, lorsque vous étiez à l'ambassade uh, de France, French embassy, pu écouter you la radio du Funk, been able to listen to the funk radio, y avait un long discours and de that on the Funk radio there was a long speech by Kyus Sampan that was repeated many many times and that was stating the general objectives of the revolution. Est-ce que vous vous souvenez so, du, du contenu de ce discours euh, Je crois qu'il a été diffusé le 22 avril 1975. Je crois qu'il a été diffusé le 22 avril 1975. Tempête que me tient tu vas pour un appel nous. Response. I don't remember this clearly because at that time. I did not pay great Car attention to Khmer Rouge ideology. We were rather caught up Rouge. in uh, our brain uh, were confused. La confusion régnait dans notre esprit. Merci. Je voudrais, euh, Thank you. Raf pour rafraîchir uh, la mémoire to, du témoin, en référer au document E3-118. Il faut refer to document E3-118. Et je me suis trompé, c'est bien un discours du 21 avril 2022. I'm sorry, this, in fact, it was a speech from the 21st of April, not the 22nd of, it, of April. So it was a victory speech on Radio Phnom Penh, and with the leave of the chamber, je pourrais remettre ce document au témoin et provide the witness with a copy of this document and display this speech on the screen as well. The President, you may proceed. The court officer is now directed to bring the documents to the witness for examination. Thank you. Les IRN sont so en anglais 00 ERN 00169694. Je répète 00169694. Français 00848584584. Jusque 55. To five five. Je répète 00848584. Et en Khmer, 00-84-61-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-
des zones to contrôlées par l'ennemi to evacuate the inhabitants from the zones controlled by the enemies by outdoing the enemy's tricks, by attacking the enemy with relentlessly, by undermining its military, economic and financial strength, and by depriving the enemy of its supplies and of its rice. L'ennemi est finalement mort the enemy dans finally de terribles souffrances. died in great suffering. Fin de citation. End of quote, free translation. Donc voici so this, les premiers extraits de ce discours. Here are the first excerpts of this speech. Does this remind you of the content that was broadcast on the funk radio back then? Response. They say that uh, they won Ils the victory through conventional weapons. Therefore, I still remember. Non, traditional. traditional. Traditional was the word. Des armes traditionnelles. Merci. Dans le même discours, un peu plus In loin, the same speech, que but further parle on, que Sampan speaks about uh, sans cesse notre constantly révolutionnaire. reinforcing our revolutionary que vigilance. Que ce terme de vigilance. Did you know what this dire? term revolutionary Et vigilance meant? Est-ce que les récits des réfugiés And ont pu vous éclairer à ce sujet? Did the refugee accounts shed any light on this? Response. At that time, we did not pay attention to the propaganda made by the Khmer Rouge. We shared the suffering of Cambodian people, in particular Phnom Penh dwellers who had been evacuated. Also, Khmer Rouge uh, used the language that was different from what they used before, so we had to understand their way of speaking. They talked about masters of independence, they talked about private, uh, no private ownership de and they de la talked privée. about the stance, the Il organizational stance, and these are the terms we never used before. Soit autant de termes qui n'avaient jamais été employés avant eux. We were reminded that uh, by that, uh, they meant uh, people who talked differently from the way they thought would be, um, you know, eliminated. Et donc, nous avons compris qu'ils avaient un autre vocabulaire. Merci. Je vais en rester là. Thank you. Question. Okay, I won't go any further with this question, but I have two questions left. Ou deux, deux mini -thèmes à or two mini-topics, rather. Uh, ce qui dans and votre what livre, really en impacted me in the book is uh, vous -même, du terme de the usage de guerre, of the word prisoner of war by yourself and by the refugees les personnes qui regarding avaient été prisoners of war who were slaves regarding the people who had been evacuated. Que vous nous so dire could you tell us quel cadre les Khmer in which context de de the Khmer Rouge the used these terms, this term, prisoner of war? Uh, Response. Anka used the term the 17th of April people, people who were liberated on the 17th of April, or they referred to them as the new people. Other 
people who had uh, been living in the countryside all along had been regarded as the old people début, or the base people. Considérés comme les anciens ou comme le peuple de base. And sometimes they even talked about Parfois, the people who were the prisoners of war. De I heard de uh, this uh, from radio broadcasts. Radio. But normally they only used dit, uh, the général, terms uh, the 17th of April people or the new April et de nouveau. Came. They did not uh, use the term slave. Ils n'employaient pas le terme d'esclave. Uh, they refer them as uh, refugees. Ils parlaient de this term réfugiés. Was, was not uh, used by Anka. And later on at uh, in about 1976 or 1977, they even used a new term, we call it the candidate people. Ben Kinnan misinterpreted the term. Ben Kinnan said that these candidate people were the people who were sent uh, to the country. And I rather, I uh, uh, refer to uh, these uh, uh, candidate uh, people as, uh, or deposited people as those who were sent to be controlled by the old people. Comme des gens envoyés et confiés à la Confie. garde des anciens. Interested. Merci. Dans les récits Thank you. Uh, que vous avez recueillis auprès des réfugiés, est-ce que ceux-ci vous ont dit s'ils avaient bénéficié de certaines libertés individuelles sous les Khmer Rouge ou bien si effectivement if ils étaient traités comme they des were prisonniers de guerre as prisoners of war. Response. The new people, or the 17th of April, people did not enjoy any nouveaux, freedom at all. The avril, au début, ne jouissaient d'aucune liberté. Later on, from 1977, Par la both suite, the base or the old people and uh, the new people les did not enjoy que les nouveaux any freedom. Ne jouissaient d'aucune liberté. From 1977, the new situation uh, occurred uh, when there was a conflict uh, between Cambodia and Vietnam. À la suite du conflit entre le Cambodge et le Vietnam. Toute dernière question, monsieur le témoin. Um, J'avais cité tout à l'heure un extrait de l'interview de Young Sari avec James Pringle où il disait en septembre 1975 que le Cambodge était un atelier Au regard de l'absence de toute liberté individuelle pour le 17 avril et par la suite the suppression pour of all les gens du individual uh, freedoms for the 17 April people est-ce que vous avez entendu on, de la bouche people, des réfugiés vous avez recueilli, recueilli le témoignage plutôt des termes comme prison à ciel ouvert words plutôt such que as open géant. air prison instead of workshop for example trois madame Response. Normally, the refugees would talk about the prison général, without walls. Sans mur. But uh, in the Khmer Rouge uh, radio broadcast, radio they referred Rouge, uh, to these uh, places as the work sites, the place uh, where people atelier. had to work days and nights d'un chantier où les gens devaient travailler jour et nuit.
they worked uh, 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 without thinking of uh, being tired or the suffering Les they had uh, endured. Travailler en dépit de leur fatigue et de leur souffrance. Je vous remercie beaucoup, Monsieur le Témoin. Je vous remercie la parole witness. à mon collègue Now qui a quelques questions pour le temps qui nous reste who has a few à vous questions, poser. Merci uh, beaucoup. Uh, to, uh, for the remaining time that is allotted to us. Thank you. Good morning, Mr. President, and uh, good morning, everyone. Good morning to Mr. Francois Poncho. I am Chandara Ratsmay, National Co-Prosecutor from the Co-Prosecutor's Office. Due to time constraints, uh, I would like to only uh, be brief and have very few questions, uh, que questions for you. Can you please uh, help clarify a point that uh, you said uh, at the French Embassy there were the seven super traitors and other individuals uh, who were the spouses uh, who married to foreigners and were forced to leave the embassy. Et qui ont été contraints de quitter l'ambassade. Were these people asked to leave peacefully or at gunpoint? And if so, who did that uh, to expel them from the embassy? Ces gens ont été expulsés de l'ambassade calmement ou bien sous la response. menace des armes. So far as réponse. I remember, no people were forced uh, at gunpoint uh, to leave uh, the embassy. I remember there was a senior cadre who asked people who had uh, French family or spouses to leave they did not threaten those people. They only asked them to leave. And the people were afraid. We were afraid of uh, the Khmer Rouge in general, anyway. And whatever they told us to do, we had to follow them. Question. You said uh, you were present at that time. Vous dites avoir Can you été also présent. tell the chamber, please, what was uh, the reaction by the French Dès embassy lors, regarding such order to leave? Dire de quelle manière l'ambassade de France Response. a réagi à cet ordre de départ? During the Khmer Rouge, uh, the environment made uh, everyone Rouge, feel terrified. Even Mr. Jean Duac, uh, who was the consular official, was. Uh, terrified le himself, he did not uh, protest uh, uh, such order terrifié. or instruction, and we had just uh, followed suit. Il Question regarding the evacuation Question. of the population of Phnom Penh, you already testified um, a lot on Vous this, but we would like you to also add a few more points, uh, whether you had ever met any senior leaders of the Khmer Rouge before you left Cambodia? If so, did you ever hear or have you ever been told by any of the senior leaders uh, about the plan to evacuate vous the city. Fait part plan de la ville. Response. I only Réponse. knew comrade Niem Je le who contacted Niem. us and the, Qui uh, he was a focal person between Ankara and us. Et nous -mêmes. And uh, I only heard uh, from him uh, that uh, we had to uh, leave. Ce que par lui que I never met que nous any partir. other cadres cadre cadre of Ankar. Ankar. Question. Question. Have you ever met or did you ever meet uh, Mr. Kusenpon after 1975, either in person or through other 
uh, arrangements if uh, you autrement. did uh, please tell the chamber if not si it oui, is fine the president uh, mr witness could you please Le hold on counsel for mr kusampon you are on your feet you Kyo may now proceed Thank you, Mr. President, say Council Kung Som On. The witness already Merci, talked about le this. He said he parlé. met uh, him once uh, eight years ago. Rencontré mon client une fois Co prosecutor, il y a thank you, Council, uh, for this. Uh, I believe that. Uh, uh, I would like to uh, move to the next question instead. Uh, Mr. Pongcho. When you were in Cambodia, and at, the, at the time when you left uh, Phnom Penh vous avez Phnom in 1975, what was your impression concerning what you saw that made ce que you remember when you were traveling from Phnom Penh? All the way Je to parle the ici area. de votre voyage de Phnom Penh jusqu'à la frontière. What uh, made me excited uh, was that uh, the road uh, was completely empty from the French Embassy to Udon, to Kampong Chanang, Posat, and Barambong. We did not see Cette route a soul, and that already terrified us. Et rien que cela, cela nous terrorisait. Because uh, I believe that at that time we were leaving the ghost the Je me country. Suis dit à ce we que did nous not meet a Cambodian, pas not un even seul Cambodian. a single soul. Pas une âme And we qui vive. saw the smoke coming nous out of uh, some fields uh, and the villages. Uh, we presumed that it could be the smoke from burning uh, houses or from the fields that were uh, burned. Question. Did you also witness any protests by the villagers who did not wish to leave Phnom Penh during the evacuation, and if they did, uh, what would uh, be the result of such resistance? Échéant, les Response. Resistance? Yesterday, I already Réponse. mentioned about the incidences Hier, that happened in two locations when the the fighting happened uh, between Lonol soldiers and the Khmer Rouge. And uh, apart from this, uh, I did not see cela, anyone fighting back because uh, je my observation was that people were leaving the city and no one would uh, be coming from the wrong direction. Les Every now and then I heard gunshots, but I did not temps, know whether the Khmer Rouge were firing these gunshots si and Rouge, perhaps uh, it could have been the sound of the doors uh, being banged uh, shut le bruit de by the soldiers claquait. during this ordeal. Question. During the evacuation phase, Question. were people separated from their family members? Est-ce que les familles ont été séparées? Response. Réponse. I knew from the refugees, although I did not see this myself. Je pas Normally, été mais Anka allow les family members to be together. Générale, now, for example, at Prague Dam, people had to march uh, through National Road Number no. 5, and they were carried uh, by the ferry. And when the ferry was full, sur uh, for Un example, bac. if um, family members uh, would plein, already be uh, on board the ferry and uh, the remaining family members would be si on uh, the famille, other side of the river, then the Khmer Rouge would never care to uh, bring them uh, together. They just would like the ferry to uh, si cross uh, the river. De la famille avait déjà traversé, Question. Les Khmer Rouge ne s'en souciaient pas. In the aftermath of the evacuation policy being implemented, 
après la mise en œuvre de la politique d'évacuation. Is that your knowledge uh, that uh, people would be treated differently? For example, like the Cham, the Vietnamese or the Chinese uh, who exemple, had Cham, been living in the country during that time. Chinois. Response. All population Réponse. of the city was uh, entirely evacuated. They were not uh, evacuated discriminately. So, except uh, uh, those uh, foreigners who were French uh, nationals or who got married uh, to the French uh, citizens who had to take refuge at the French embassy. And I also wish to also add that uh, in late 1975, uh, uh, Anka allowed uh, Vietnamese immigrants to return to their home country. We believe uh, in general that uh, the Khmer Rouge could have killed uh, general, the Vietnamese uh, people, but that is not true because the Khmer Rouge uh, did uh, help. Les uh, these uh, Vietnamese to uh, be Vietnamien repatriated, and I also have ample documents to support this assertion. And uh, again, by late 1975, these uh, uh, Khmer Rouge or Anka helped uh, Vietnam to return home. A aidé ces Vietnamiens à retourner dans leur pays d'origine. Thank you, Mr. Witness, and thank you, Mr. President, Your Honours. Uh, Merci, Monsieur le Président. No Monsieur le Président, Mesdames et Messieurs les juges, uh, je n'ai plus de questions uh, à poser. Pour moi, and with that, I wish uh, the witness all the best. Je souhaite bonne chance aux témoins. The President, uh, thank you. Next, uh, we would like Président. to hand over Merci. to présent, the lead co-lawyers for the civil parties who put questions to the witness. Council Pick -Ang. Maître Pick -Ang. Good morning, Mr. President, uh, and good morning, Your Honours. Bonjour, Honours. Président, Mesdames, Messieurs les Juges. Councils uh, who will be putting questions to uh, the witness uh, will be Council Elizabeth and Maître uh, Elizabeth Simon Mok Sovanari. Mok Sovanari vont se charger d'interroger le témoin pour la partie civile. Council Mok Sovanari. Good morning, Mr. Mok President. Sovanari. Good morning, Bonjour, Your Honours. And Monsieur very good juge. morning to you, Mr. Witness. Le I am Mok Sovanari here, represent civil parties who are victims of the Khmer Rouge. I have a few questions Et les victimes des for Khmer you. Rouge. These questions are classified into two sections. First, I would like to ask a few questions, uh, follow-up questions, questions that have already been uh, put uh, to the witness. And secondly, I would like uh, to ask uh, the witness about the information he has obtained from the refugees, in particular the accounts of the refugees who shared concerning their suffering under the Khmer Rouge regime and during the time when they became the refugees. The first question that I wish to ask you now is a follow-up question. Yesterday you responded to the president of the trial chamber that on the evening of the 17th of April 1975, a group of soldiers would like to take refuge at your home, and you talked with them the whole night, and you were deprived of your sleep. When you talked to the soldiers the whole night without sleep, uh, what did you talk to them? Did you talk about Khmer Rouge ideology? Did you talk about the plan to evacuate the city, or you talk anything about uh, what could happen to the country at that time? Response. Response. These soldiers came from Srasrang, uh, from Simriap. I do not wish to talk about ideology or the Anka's plan, because these people perhaps did not know about it, or I myself was not brave enough to engage in this perhaps politically motivated uh, topic, because uh, these soldiers already showed their, uh, the facial impression that 
uh, is not uh, ver- that was not very friendly, and that's uh, enough for me not to engage uh, or invoke uh, such discussion. Donc, uh, the president uh, council could discussion. you slow down a little bit uh, when you Le are president. putting questions uh, to the witness uh, for good record, indeed. Council Moitsvanari, thank you, Mr. Maître president, uh, for reminding. I have Merci another question. Rappel, Yesterday, you said on one occasion yes. you brought uh, some Khmer Rouge soldiers to the railway station for a meeting. And at that time, you said that uh, there was a meeting. Vous dites qu'une réunion a eu lieu. Can you tell the chamber how many people attended uh, the meeting and what was the subject matter of such meeting? L'objet de cette réunion. A response oui. yesterday, Réponse. I said about uh, the railway station, but I did not Hier mention about l'air. the meeting being convened uh, at the train station. Que la réunion avait eu lieu à la gare. I talked about the people who asked me to bring them to the railway station. I did not know whether they would have a meeting there, or perhaps they would uh, uh, be there to uh, discuss about the plan to fight at the border. And I said uh, uh, to to the, to the Khmer Rouge deceitfully uh, that there Je were six soldiers who would uh, be meeting at the train Rouge. station. And I learned at a later date uh, that there uh, were different groups of soldiers, young soldiers, soldiers old soldiers, those who wore black clothes or dark green clothes. Uh, and I felt uh, suspicious because uh, I knew that there could have been other group of soldiers mingled together in this city. And then I uh, noted that there were six soldiers who met. I did not know what they were doing. Thank you, Mr. Witness. Question. Yesterday, you also answered the question by Hier, Judge uh, Lavergne, and in that testimony, uh, you made mention the uh, uh, carder of the Khmer Rouge by the name of uh, Nyem, and he, you also said that he was not uh, holding position of importance, and he was not in the position to uh, enter into any political negotiation. What was the uh, basis uh, you rely on in order to come to the conclusion that uh, he was not a senior uh, Khmer Rouge uh, candidate? Uh, what do you base your, your answer on? I do not know how to explain, uh, and I can hardly distinguish between the uh, high-ranking and so a uh, lower-ranking uh, official. Both uh, Biso and I, uh, we uh, communicated with uh, Comrade Niem uh, on a daily basis. Uh, we only ask him for the daily, day-to-day work uh, for our survival in French embassy. We did not talk politics uh, at that time with him. And later on, uh, there was another cadre, and I suspected that he was somebody of higher-ranking uh, position. I did not know his name. Uh, he was a carder and supposedly a higher ranking uh, official, uh, according to uh, the words uh, he used. He said he could weigh the words and uh, instruction from the authority. He told everyone that. Uh, his Excellency Kilsampon wanted uh, to talk to people at the French Embassy, but he was being engaged uh, in reorganizing the revolutionary forces. Uh, so he was addressing uh, us at that time in the position uh, of uh, somebody important. So I thought uh, that he was uh, somebody in a ranking, uh, higher ranking official. For example, there was uh, another character. Uh, negotiating uh, with us about the repatriation uh, of the uh, f- uh, foreign national in the French embassy. So I uh, could uh, assume uh, that those uh, people were from higher ranking positions. 
This is a uh, excerpt uh, in your book describing the event relevant to Mr. Kiu Sampong. On, I am not going to uh, read out this excerpt uh, from your book, but I just would like to ask you to expand on this. At that time, I, I just would like you to tell the court uh, whether or not that card uh, told uh, you uh, what position Mr. Kiu Sampong held and whether or not uh, that person uh, mention uh, Mr. Kiu Sampon, and in Et your book you address him si with a higher ranking title uh, as Excellency. So, uh, did uh, the person uh, told, tell you at that time uh, what position uh, Mr. Kiu Sampon held? Response. At that time, uh, that comrade uh, told us uh, that Mr. Kiu Sampon was somebody uh, among the leaders who led the country at that time, but uh, there was no uh, mention of a specific position, Et but uh, they only say that Mr. Kilsenpon was among the leaders of the country. Uh, he did not make mention of Pol Pot or any other official. And in my book, I mention uh, the men by the names of Pot, Haim, Van. These uh, were the names uh, of the high-ranking official in the upper authority. And Pek Lim Kuen, who was the uh, helicopter uh, pilot, uh, he also shared with me the names. But I did not... In my book, I described Comrade Pot. I did not know who Comrade Pot was. Probably Nong Soon or Salat Saw. Comrade Haim, I did not know either, but Comrade Haim is now with us now. At that time, I did not know. And Von Wait, uh, uh, Comrade Warren uh, was Von Wait. I did not know who was actually at the apparatus uh, of the Khmer Rouge uh, or Anka at that time, but uh, we knew that letter that uh, Comrade Paul was a lot of I learned uh, about it in uh, September 1977. And and Solot so once went to China to announce the existence of the Communist Party of Cambodia. Question. Thank you. Just now you uh, told the national prosecutor that uh, you did not meet uh, Mr. Kilsampon later on. So my follow-up question uh, to this, uh, have you uh, heard or did you ever hear when you were residing in France that Mr. Kilsampon had traveled to France in order to appeal to the Cambodian intellectuals who were pursuing their study in France to return to Cambodia to help rebuild the country? Or did you ever hear uh, any statement made by Mr. Kilsampon uh, to uh, this effect? Response. Response. I guess uh, you might have uh, misunderstood me. Actually, uh, Mr. Kusampon did not go to France. It was Mr. Yang Sari. Mr. Yang Sari went to France and he convened a meeting uh, in a, a place. Uh, it was a very big uh, place. And Mr. before Mr. Yang Sari went to France, uh, he uh, prepared a big uh, a, a video footage uh, of uh, the appeal and as well as the situations in Cambodia. And then he went there. He appealed to the Cambodian intellectual residing in France to return to Cambodia to help rebuild the country. And I think uh, our court 
also invited uh, Mr. Ong Tung Hoon to testify as well. At that time, Mr. Ong Tung Hoon was, me, uh, was with me. He uh, listened to the address by Mr. Yeng Sari. And then I told him that you must not return to Cambodia. But at that time, he did not believe me. He blamed me. He said he accused me of being CIA. I, but I told, I, told, I told him that he must not return to Cambodia. Uh, lawyer, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, Witness, I would like to interrupt you. You have already answered my question. I would like to now continue with another question. This morning you said Anka was very good at lying, lying the people or tricking the people. So I would like to ask you to expand on this. When did Anka uh, start to lie people and how did you come to know this? Anka used lie uh, to actually lure people to uh, follow them, and it was a tactic they used at the time to control the situation. Uh, they uh, deploy this uh, trick in order to evacuate people out of the city. And I noticed, I, I came to notice this uh, because uh, in the propaganda, they use uh, certain words now, for example, greatly forward, the glorious 17th April, so on and so forth. This were some things that I uh, came to know that that were some things that the Anka is actually lying the people, especially when they uh, executed the innocent people, as I mentioned this morning. One man in Kinswai, uh, he uh, he appealed uh, to the soldiers and senior ranking officers of the previous regime to write down their names on a board, and eventually these people were executed. So this, this, this happened on the 20th of April ចាសុំអរគុណលោកសាក់សីខ្ញុំនឹងចូលទៅផ្នែកទីពីរនៃសំណួរខ្ញុំពាក់ទងជាមួយនឹងព័ត៌មានដែលលោកបានទទួលប
uh, substance of this uh, quotation based on the radio broadcast as well as the uh, subsequent information you received from the victims uh, who uh, came across this regime. Uh, were they really uh, enjoying uh, the work that they were doing at that time uh, in that so-called vast work site? Response. I explained yesterday when I started yeah. conducting research uh, on uh, the uh, in Cambodia starting que from uh, September 1975. First, I listened to the refugees. Refugee uh, tell the accounts of their uh, past experience that uh, I could hardly believe it. Uh, they say they worked uh, day and night. Uh, but bef earlier on, I uh, could hardly believe them because it was beyond anyone's imagination. But later on, uh, I had an idea uh, to go and listen to the radio broadcast by the Democratic Cambodia, because at that time I saw that uh, Anka was not crazy enough uh, to make people do uh, such a past job, because uh, the Anka's leaders were uh, well educated, like Solotso was uh, educated in France, uh, so I thought that they must have had a very well organized plan to develop the country. I thought in the first place that uh, they had good intention for the development of the country. So I, at that time, paid more attention to listening to the Khmer Rouge uh, radio broadcast in order to um, uh, follow uh, the uh, 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 political lines and you see uh, here, uh, when I quoted uh, using the uh, inverted commas over here, uh, actually it was the direct quote from the radio broadcast. And in other part, I actually based on uh, the broadcast of the Democratic Cambodia radio. And if you read uh, over there outside the quotation, uh, it was the uh, uh, report based on the accounts of people who have uh, come across uh, this period. Uh, they worked very hard. Uh, actually, uh, they did not work with joy and pride, but actually they worked uh, very hard, extremely hard. Now, for example, uh, interrupt counsel. Uh, I think you have already answered my question. I have, due to uh, my uh, time uh, limitation, I need to pursue uh, my next uh, line of questioning. So my next question, uh, with permission from Mr. President, I would like to present another document, uh, D134.1, entitled in Khmer, uh, Cambodia Liberation Year. The President, uh, you may proceed. In this uh, particular document, Dans I would document, like to refer to only a relevant portion of the book, uh, relevant here and in Khmer, 00, 00, 00, 32, English, 00, 3693, French, 00, 28, 3064. On this particular portion of your book, you say uh, from the 17th of April 1975, some 20,000 Cambodians uh, decided to um, leave the country. They cross border sometimes on the 17th of April. And in December, every year, two or three uh, people arrive at Arang Pratet. So based on your interview with those refugees, uh, did they tell you the reason why they decided to take a risk to 
exiled to other country. Uh, because uh, at that time, they must have known uh, that uh, their country was uh, liberated, but on the contrary, they decided to take all the risk to cross the border illegally uh, to a foreign country. There were different uh, categories of people. Now, the civil servants or soldiers of the previous regimes, they ran into uh, the border because they want to uh, escape uh, from that. For example, one man uh, by the name of Samien, he was uh, considered the most corrupt official. He sells uh, rice uh, to the uh, Khmer Rouge. Uh, so at that time, when the Khmer Rouge concurred in the war, uh, they uh, fled uh, in fear of um, reprisal of the uh, Khmer Rouge at that time. And some people who live uh, some 30 kilometers away from the uh, from the border, uh, they told uh, us, uh, uh, they heard from others that the Khmer Rouge uh, killed so many people, so they decided to, uh, to flee uh, the country. Uh, at that time, uh, we we learned uh, that many people were terrified for their, and they fled for their life. Thank you, Mr. Witness. I have uh, my last two questions uh, concerning the same uh, topic. Uh, my First question, I refer to the same document the that document? I uh, uh, handed over to you, document D133-1.2. Uh, and I would like uh, to extract uh, the relevant page, EAN00 in Khmer, 0024-85. Eight, English 00609103, French 00410324. On this particular portion, you mentioned uh, the refugees whom you interview concerning the uh, second phase of population movement. According to you, you said, uh, according to the refugees who arrived in Thailand, uh, they said uh, that uh, the uh, second wave of uh, population movement led to many more casualty. Uh, the numbers of casualty were even more than uh, the first wave of evacuation in 1975. That was due to the uh, uh, food uh, shortages as well as uh, diseases and other living conditions. So when you met with those refugees, uh, could you tell the court uh, what suffering did they uh, tell you when they were uh, being evacuated, when, for example, they did not have sufficient food to eat, uh, they uh, did not have uh, access to medicine or health care, when they were forcibly evacuated from one place to another. What were the sufferings they uh, described to you at the time when you were interviewing them? On May or, or June 1975 or early 1976, Anka evacuated uh, the population uh, for the second time. Uh, I uh, wrote this, uh, this uh, article again because Judge Le uh, might have confused uh, through the uh, interpretation. Uh, there were people who were transported from Dakar uh, to Phnom Penh, and then they were uh, taken by, carried by the train, and then uh, they went all the way uh, to Phnom Tapade near Mukolbore. It was like Hitler uh, taking Yuda. The Khmer Rouge uh, were not Hitler. They were communists. They were, they were not Nazi. Nazi. They uh, describe uh, their accounts of the events at that time. It was uh, a barbaric uh, treatment. Uh, they were staying in the wagon of the train. They were not given food. They were not given water. Uh, they 
did not have place uh, to uh, advocate or to release uh, themselves. Uh, they had to stay uh, in the small wagon packed with people over there. It was like the U.S. were being taken uh, by the Nazis uh, uh, in the past. So among those people, there were so many casualties. And if you want to seek clarification on this uh, situation, you can ask Kum uh, Nald, uh, he was a uh, former uh, doctor at uh, Keto Mili Hospital, and he was the person who received those people in C. Supon, and he was one of the surviving witnesses. Thank you. Thank you. You have answered my question, and actually you also answered my last question that I'm about to ask, so I do not have any further question to you, and I thank you, Mr. President, uh, for giving me the opportunity to put the question to the witness, and I thank you, witness, for endeavoring to answering my question. I would like to now see the floor to my colleague, the President. Yes, uh, please, uh, lawyers, you may proceed. Oui, bonjour, Monsieur le Président. Bonjour, Mesdames et Messieurs les juges. Bonjour à tous. Et bonjour à vous, Monsieur le témoin. Je précise que j'en ai à peu près pour 30 minutes. Donc, je ne sais pas si je commence tout de suite ou si vous préférez que je commence après la pause déjeuner. Comme vous le souhaiterez, Monsieur le Président. Je vais commencer à la pause déjeuner. Je suis dans vos mains, Monsieur le Président. You may proceed now, and uh, we will try our best uh, to make use of the court time to ensure efficiency and expeditiousness uh, of the trial. So you may proceed. Merci. Monsieur le témoin, je m'appelle Elisabeth Simonofort et je suis l'avocat des parties civiles en ce procès. Ce qui m'intéresse aujourd'hui dans le temps qui m'est imparti, je vous le dis très directement, ce n'est pas ce que vous pensez, en tout cas dans cette enceinte, ce n'est pas ce qui m'intéresse aujourd'hui parce que j'ai peu de temps. Ce qui m'intéresse en revanche, c'est ce que vous avez vu comme témoin oculaire et ce que vous avez entendu des réfugiés, ce qui fait de vous un témoin auditif. Je voudrais, vous disiez hier que ce qui est important ici, ce sont les Cambodgiens. Je suis d'accord avec vous. Et ce que je souhaite évoquer aujourd'hui, c'est ce qu'ils vous ont dit essentiellement, ce qu'ils ont vécu. Et je voudrais, notamment par mes questions, clarifier un certain nombre de choses sur la façon dont vous avez collecté leurs euh, témoignages the manner in which you et sur la façon dont vous avez ensuite and accounts, repris ces témoignages pour well faire un certain nombre de rapports ou d'articles de journaux. Uh, en fait, je vais me pencher essentiellement sur un rapport report qui est and le rapport qui a été déjà évoqué par M. le juge Laverne hier, le document yesterday. E3, I'm referring to barre de fraction 1804, qui est un rapport que vous avez fait à la Commission des droits de l'homme en juillet 1978. Et je vais aussi évoquer les deux articles du Monde qui viennent d'être cités par ma consoeur pour partie et qui avaient été évoqués hier par M. le juge Laverne et qui portent le document de le numéro Laverne, and which D bear the document numbers D1-3-1.2. En ce qui concerne le rapport que vous avez fait euh, With respect à la to the report that you submitted to this human vous intitulez celui-ci « Quelques repères concernant les violations des droits de l'homme ». You make vous mention écrivez of ceci alors que le régime est encore en cours et vous you écrivez vos deux articles au Monde quelques mois seulement après la prise de fonction des Khmer Rouge. Dans le premier document, the, uh, to power le document que je vais évoquer en premier, qui est ce rapport, document, report, vous évoquez diverses violations, ce que vous appelez des violations, et euh, ce sont des constatations que vous faites à partir vous avez dit, des témoignages et qui ont abouti pour vous à des certitudes. 
La première constatation qui m'intéresse est celle que vous faites à propos des déplacements de population. Hier, Monsieur le juge Laverne vous a lu un extrait de ce document. Je ne le relirai pas. En ce qui concerne les déplacements de population, le premier et le deuxième, est-il juste de dire, que vos constatations résultent d'abord de ce que vous avez vu, entendu et appris lorsque vous étiez en Cambodge, au Cambodge et jusqu'au début mai 1975. Until May 1975, I saw the evacuation of people from Phnom Penh, but I could not see the fate of those people later on. Mai 1975, mais j'ai vu l'évacuation de Phnom Penh, mais je n'ai pas vu le sort qui a été réservé à ces gens. Oveille, oveille, daikyum dang, qui est oveille, oveille, daikyum sou. What I knew was gained from my interview with the refugees from September 1975. Des réfugiés que j'ai tenus à partir de septembre 1975. Pour être plus clair, monsieur, vous avez constaté clarity, sir, tout de même dans Phnom Penh un certain nombre de choses Penh, entre le 17 avril et votre départ. Il n'y avait personne. I saw the evacuation of 200 or 300 people along the boulevard. De 200 ou 300 personnes I did not see any other thing. Mais je n'ai rien vu d'autre. People of all age, children, des women, gens de tous âges, des enfants, patient, des femmes, were all des malades, tous. So they would die. They would surely die. Ils Those probablement women mourir. who have just given birth Il y avait would have little chance to survive. Des femmes qui venaient d'accoucher et elles avaient de très minces chances de survie. Je vous remercie pour cette précision. Vous venez de dire que euh, vos constatations sur ces déplacements résultaient par ailleurs des témoignages des réfugiés. Et vous avez qualifié, Monsieur le procureur l'a rappelé ce matin, ces déplacements de politique systématique lorsque vous avez été entendu par le juge d'instruction. Je voudrais venir ensuite à une deuxième constatation que vous faites dans ce rapport dans lequel vous parlez de violation des droits de l'homme, vous faites une deuxième série de constatations concernant la vie des personnes et des familles dans les coopératives et les camps de travail. Dans le document E3-1804, vous indiquez notamment à propos de cela Mari et femme sont généralement séparés et ne se retrouvent que de temps en temps, surtout lorsqu'il s'agit du peuple nouveau. Les jeunes enfants sont généralement confiés aux soins des vieilles femmes de la coopérative et à partir de 6 ans sont pratiquement coupés de leurs parents. Ils appartiennent aux partis et n'ont que rarement la possibilité de vivre en famille. Au-dessus de 13 ou 14 ans, les adolescents entrent dans les troupes mobiles et ne revoient que très rarement leurs parents. Dans l'article du Monde du 17 février 1976, à l'ERN français 00410324, anglais 00609-102, Khmer 00 83 24 84, vous dites, toujours sur cette même 
Seconde série de constatations, cette armée de travailleurs est mobile. L'ANCAR semblant vouloir utiliser le potentiel humain jusqu'à l'extrême limite de ses forces physiques. Ces constatations que vous faites à ce moment-là, monsieur, j'ai bien compris qu'elles venaient des réfugiés. Pouvez-vous confirmer qu'elles venaient d'un grand nombre de réfugiés et que ces réfugiés étaient soit à la frontière thaï, soit à la frontière vietnamienne j'ai interviewé des réfugiés and I also interviewed the refugees qui réfugiés who went to France as well. et non au Vietnam mais également en France. The Khmer Rouge radio also gave La some information Khmer about the mobile unit, children unit, brigade mobile, les unités d'enfants. I learned about the Khmer Rouge Society through the Khmer Rouge Radio. Khmer Rouge, par la radio Khmer Rouge. I learned about the Children's Unit, entendu parler des unités which was in charge of collecting cattle excrement and plants du to be used as fertilizer. Que des plantes afin de en faire de l'engrais. Later, Ensuite, there were Mobile unit, women's unit. Des brigades mobiles, des brigades de femmes. So this is the explanation from the Khmer Rouge radio. La radio Khmer Rouge l'a bien expliqué. And they divided the people into two groups. Les gens étaient répartis Those who were married. Catégories. Husbands were assigned to work far away la, to clear forest, to plow the rice field, to pour fish, labourer les rizières, pêcher, défricher. Women Quant aux femmes, work close to the villages. Elles travaillaient plus près des villages. The Khmer Radio explained that radio all age people que les gens de tous les âges all people age from 55 upward, y compris ceux de plus de 55 ans were assigned to make devaient tool for fabriquer farming. des outils d'agriculture And they said that those people describe their work in happiness. They enjoy working. Et la radio disait que ces gens aimaient travailler et qu'ils étaient heureux. Non, je n'ai pas dit ça. I didn't say that. Khmer Rouge radio broadcast broadcast about how la radio the society Rouge should be educated and also how people lived their life. Et des conditions de vie de la population. The President, uh, thank you Mr. Witness and Council for the civil parties. It is now appropriate a moment for lunch adjournment. The Chamber will adjourn. And the next session so will be resumed by 1.30 p.m. Court officer is now Monsieur instructed to assist the witness during this adjournment and have him return to the courtroom by 1.30 p.m. Security personnel are now instructed to bring Mr. Kilson Pond to his holding cell and have him return to the courtroom when the next session resumes. Garde de sécurité veuillez accompagner Kilson Pond au début de l'attention et le ramener auprès de toi avant la fin de la reprise des audiences.